Jonathan Johnny Edward Borrell is an English guitarist and singer, currently the frontman of the band Razorlight. Early life and career, Borrell was involved in music and the Camden scene while still at school. At 17 he played bass guitar in a band called Violet, who regularly played gigs on the Camden circuit. The band recorded an EP and started to gain some recognition before splitting acrimoniously live on stage at Dublin Castle in late 97 early 98. The title track of the EP was subsequently used in the soundtrack of the 1998 Michael Winterbottom film I Want You. After the split, he briefly switched to being a solo artist covering the Clash and Lead Belly songs. Many of these shows were played with close friends the Libertines. Through his friendship with schoolmate John Hassall, at Highgate School, Borrell was involved in the early formation of the Libertines. He was present at the sessions for their debut album Up the Bracket and appears as a character in songs, notably Boy Looked at Johnny, and Death on the Stairs. In 2002 he went on to form his own band which played house parties, rehearsing at a hackney warehouse called Unit 13, comprising Carl Delamo. Christian Smith Pankulvo and Ja Paragraph Arena Gren. The band were watching a video recording of themselves playing a gig, and mishear the ending refrain It's All Right, It's All Right from the song in the city is Razor Light, Razor Light which was then chosen as the band name. In early 2003 XFM DJ John Kennedy began to play the band's demos, recorded at Toorag Studios in East London with producers Liam Watson and John Fortis. Razorlight signed to Mercury Records on May 23, 2003 after the Universal label fought off bids from Sony. After the number 8 single Golden Touch, their debut album, Up All Night, was released on June 28, 2004, and charted at number 3 in the UK. The critical reception was generally good, receiving good reviews from NME, Q Magazine, Billboard and Rolling Stone who said a Euro OE Razorlight's debut is a masterpiece. He's got the golden rock star mop, the London sneer and a band full of crazy Swedes. But fortunately, he's also got the tunes a Euro Michael Parkinson saw coverage of the band performing at Glastonbury Festival and invited them onto his TV show. Razorlight performed Golden Touch with a gospel choir in front of the Parkinson studio audience and guest Tom Cruise. After 2004's constant touring Borrell was placed at number 4 in NME's Cool List and Razorlight won Best New Act at 2004's Q Awards and the Best New Band category at the NME Awards in February 2005. French fashion brand Dior's creative director Hedy Slimane based his 2005 autumn winter collection on Borrell and Pete Doherty and chose Razorlight to write music for the Paris show. In the spring of 2005 Razorlight played two sold-out shows at London's Alexandra Palace with Noel Fielding from the Mighty Bush as their support act. Meanwhile in between album single Somewhere Else reached number two in the UK charts. Q magazine called it, a Euro OEA punk rock symphony, a thrilling change in direction. High-profile support slots with U2, Queen. The Who and Oasis and the band's appearance at Live 8 kept Razorlight occupied through the rest of the year prior to entering the studio for their second album in early 2006. The self-titled follow-up was produced by Pretenders, Sex Pistols and Roxy Music producer Chris Thomas. First single in the morning went to number three, and when the album was released on July 17, 2006 it gave the band their first number one in the UK album chart. The NME gave the album 8-10 and said, a Euro OEA soulful romantic album that sees Razorlight comfortably leap the A Euro difficult second album a Euro unregistered trademark trap, a Euro the Observer Music Monthly gave it 4-5 saying his band's second album justifies the self-belief. Q magazine called it the best guitar album since Oasis is definitely maybe a 2006 Euro saw Borrell and the band grow into an arena act and extend their international reach. Second single America went straight to number one in the UK on October 14 dominating UK radio charts to the end of the year, and climbing airplay and singles charts in Ireland, the Netherlands, France, Denmark, Germany, New Zealand, Australia, Japan and beyond. The Rolling Stones asked the band to support them in Europe. An autumn UK arena tour culminated in a sold-out Wembley Arena show and tours of Japan, 
Europe and the US lead into a second UK arena tour and a sold-out show at London's 17,000 capacity Earls Court in April 2007. Razorlight were the only UK band to headline the main stage at Reading Festival in August 2007, with US artists, the Smashing Pumpkins and Red Hot Chili Peppers taking the top slots on the other two nights. The Razorlight singer next emerged in October, duetting with the Kings Ray Davis on Sunny Afternoon for the BBC Electric Proms at London's The Round House. In late 2007 Borrell secluded himself on a remote Scottish island in the Outer Hebrides to begin writing for the band's third album. 2008's London sessions at Air Studios lead to a more contemplative third album titled Slipway Fires. The album went to number four in the UK album charts in November 2008 and first single Wire to Wire got to number five. Press reaction to the record was mixed although Q's Paul Rees gave the record 4-5 and said, a Euro OE Borrell and his band come up triumphant. It does what third albums traditionally used to do, which is to say, have the confidence the leap into the previously unknown, and for that, all credit to Borrell, in Germany a Euro Wire to Wire was the sixth biggest chart hit of 2009 and the album went gold. Two round the world tours including first visits to Australia, a move to a new U.S. label, Mercury Records Island Def Jam and major festival appearances in the U.K. and across Europe took Razor Light to the end of the decade, finishing with a December headline at XFM's Brixton Academy Christmas show where they donated their fee to Borrell's charity of choice, Anos Africa. December 2009 also saw the digital release of a documentary on Razor Light made by acclaimed U.K. film director Charles Henri Beleville. Titled Ruckney Euro Unregistered Trademark Role Lies the 70-minute film follows the band on a week of eccentric UK shows intercut with band member interviews about Razorlight's history. The title also features eccentric bonus material including Borel's charity Hovercraft Crossing of the English Channel under drummer Andy Burroughs' trials and tribulations whilst giving up smoking. Solo Work, Borel's debut solo album, Borel One, was released in July 2013. It was produced by Trevor Horn. The album received mixed reviews from critics. At Metacritic, which assigns a rating out of 100, the album received an average score of 46, based on nine reviews by mainstream critics. The album was a commercial failure, selling 594 copies in its first week on sale and failed to secure a position in the UK album's chart. Reputation and Charity Work Borrell has sometimes been regarded as having a very arrogant attitude towards the press and as famous for his proclamations of his own abilities such as claiming he thinks he's the greatest songwriter in the world on MTV's Gonzo hosted by Zane Lowe. However, like many other artists who come across negatively in NME interviews, Borrell and supporters have accused the magazine of misrepresentation and emphasizing quotes out of context. Borrell has made numerous contributions to charity. Razor Light recorded Kirby's House for the 2005 Warchild album and played London, Royal Albert Hall shows in 2006 and 2008 for the Who's Teenage Cancer Trust events. In 2006 Borrell started to work for Friends of the Earth's climate change campaign The Big Ask, a relationship which has continued through 2006's show in Trafalgar Square for the I Count campaign to playing at FOE's November 2009 Hammersmith Apollo fundraiser. Razorlight were deemed to be one of the highlights of July 2, 2005 Live 8 charity concert in Hyde Park and continued to support Borrell's global warming concerns by taking part in July 7, 2007 Live Earth event at Wembley Stadium. Borrell is one of the few new generation stars to have appeared on the cover of a national UK newspaper because of his political views. On November 4, 2006 his essay on climate change was the front cover story of The Independent. Razorlight have also regularly supported Nelson Mandela's 46,664 AIDS charity. In July 2005 the band flew to Tromso, Norway to play a 46,664 fundraiser. Mandela invited the Razor Light to perform at his December 1, 2007 World AIDS Day concert in Johannesburg, which allowed the band to visit Township AID's projects. Borrell also worked with environmentally friendly charity Global Cool on their 2007 Green campaigns. 
They also played at Mandela's July 2008 90th birthday celebration fundraiser in Hyde Park. Through his love of cricket Borrell has become friends with some of the English cricket team including former captain Andrew Flintoff who asked Razorlight to play at the inaugural night of his charity, the Andrew Flintoff Foundation in July 2009 at London's The Hurlingham Club. Borrell also played charity shows for Nordoff Robbins, and Save the Children in the latter part of 2009 and in September duetted on J. Swiss venue T.E. Dia K.J.M.E. N. Bay with legendary singer Jane Birkin as part of a fundraiser for Kenyan children's charity Anos Africa. Borrell and the Libertines, Borrell is one of the Dalston set, a clique of indie notables connected to the early days of the Libertines, along with Dominic Masters of the others, Pete Doherty, Carl Burris and T. John Hassall, and the Queens of Noise. It has been reported that he was briefly a stand-in bassist for the Libertines before they were signed, but in recent interviews he has claimed that this is not true. In Pete Welsh's Kids in the Riot, it is alleged that Borrell was sacked as the Libertines' bassist for unreliable behavior and not having the same musical ability as the other members, but in general there is little animosity between the two bands, and Borrell remains friends with Carl Burris and T. The Libertines' song The Boy Looked at Johnny is reputedly about Borrell, and Razor Lights Don't Go Back to Dalston is reputedly directed at Pete Doherty, telling him to curtail his drug habit. XFM, following his four-week residency on London radio station, XFM, Borrell joined it for an eight-week stint hosting a Sunday night show called The Sunday Service. It began on September 6, 2009 and ran for nine weeks with Borrell playing a broad range of records spanning Jamaican dancehall, blues, rugby Euro unregistered trademark role, crawtrock and spoken word. Other work, Borrell has appeared twice on The Mighty Bush, once alone as a giant rapist rabbit in the 2006 stage show and once with Razor Light in the episode The Priest and the Beast. Noel Fielding also opened for Razorlight at their two sold-out Alexandra Palace shows in 2005 and appeared in the Razorlight video for the song in the morning and up all night. Borrell appeared on the front cover of the May 2007 issue of Vogue magazine, alongside supermodel Natalia Vodianova, in his trademark skinny white jeans and topless. Borrell is one of only seven men who have appeared on the cover of the UK version of Vogue. In 2008 Borrell and bandmate Andy Burrows appeared at the Teenage Cancer Trust Comedy Night at the Royal Albert Hall, hosted by Borrell's friend Noel Fielding. The two played a short acoustic set. Late in 2007 Borrell played keyboards in a band he helped put together for Florence Welch of Florence and the Machine. The pair had met through Florence's manager Mary Nash. Borrell went on to co-write and produce two songs with Welch. The Hanging Song and Building Bricks although these did not end up on Florence's debut album. It was reported that Borrell would star in an Irvin Welsh scripted film alongside Colin Firth and Robert Carlyle called The Meat Trade, however the film did not make it into production. He has been approached with further film roles but has yet to commit to one. References External links, Razorlight official site, Johnny Borrell at the Internet Movie Database.